Hey everyone, my name is Alex, and in this video we'll be going over a new artificial intelligence API I discovered recently called Midjourney. Midjourney is a text to artwork application that converts text into a visual representation using machine learning algorithms. These applications typically provide options for customizing the appearance or style of the output, which in turn produces your resulting image. This is essentially done by teaching or training machine learning models on a large data set of text and corresponding images or videos so that it can learn to recognize patterns and associations between the two. Once the model has been trained, like teaching a child right from wrong, it can then be used to generate new images or even video from the text input in real time. So in this video, we'll be asking ourselves whether this kind of technology could potentially replace artists, specifically video game designers. We'll use Midjourney to generate us basic 8-bit sprite sheets that we could potentially use for our own video game in the future, and then we'll compare the results with some real sprite sheets. Simply put, it's very unlikely that text-to-artwork applications will completely replace video game designers in the near future. Designing or creating a full-fledged video game requires a very wide range of skills and expertise beyond simply converting text to images or videos. To get started, head on over to midjourney.com. This is going to be the landing page for the API, but unlike other APIs, the actual text to art is all done through an application called Discord. Uh, Discord is a communications platform, sort of like Skype, but it was primarily designed for online gaming communities. Once you click the option to sign up for the beta, you'll be asked to link your new Midjourney account with your Discord account. And once doing so, you can finally head on over to the Midjourney Discord server in the Discord app. Once you've hopped over into the Midjourney Discord server, you'll see dozens of these general channels where we can go ahead and jump right in. Instead, we're going to hop into one of these newbie channels since I'm still rather new and learning all of the various tips and tricks. So to use Midjourney, start by typing forward slash followed by the word imagine. You'll see a prompt box up here where you can input your prompt. We're going to ask it for a basic Fallout themed video game sprite sheet and see what we get. Adding two hyphens followed by V space four will give us four unique variations of our prompt. If we add two more hyphens followed by stylize and then a value between I believe zero and a thousand, the API will produce more original or creative images. It does take several moments until it returns your output, but a Discord bot will ping you when it's ready. As you can see, dozens of other people are in the channel also asking their requests, so this can slow down the servers at times. If you have several jobs or requests going on at the same time, you'll be placed into sort of this queue where your jobs will start once the others have finished, so as to not slow down the API for everybody else. And here we have it. It looks like our image is 30% ready or so, and the output looks all blurry and distorted. However, we can definitely make out four unique sprite sheets. And there we go. Our request is complete, and it gave us some really cool, high-quality, Fallout-themed video game sprites. And if we click Open Original, it will give us the full-size version in our browser. If we zoom in, we can see they're a little pixelated, Oh, and also, everything you generate in Discord can be viewed or downloaded on the Midjourney website once you sign in and first link your account. So right off the bat, it does look like these may need to be slightly tweaked and touched up a bit, but still, these are really neat looking video game assets with almost zero effort. If we hop back into Discord and click the V3 button, this is gonna give us four new variations of the third image or the one on the bottom left. Alternatively, the U3 would give us an upscaled render of the third image. So now we have a brand new generation based off that third image and you can see that they're all slightly different from one another. Uh, but we can still use all four images for our sprites if we really wanted to. It looks like a whole bunch of miscellaneous tools and machinery, as well as several variations of some characters as well. And let's just zoom in on one of these so you can see the details up close. How cool is that? Each image is slightly, you know, just different enough that you can use all of these various 
individual pieces as one big sprite sheet. So what I'll do is hop back over into Discord and I will select the upscaled version of all of these and, and then I can go back up and grab those other assets even. I did quickly just want to sign into the Midjourney website again so I can show you how to view your collection of generations and then download them straight from the website rather than trying to sift through all of the dozens of new ones that other people are generating on Discord. So all you have to do is log in and click the little save icon and now it's uh, on our PC. Now that we've saved all those sprites to our computer, we can jump on into your favorite photo editing software. I'm using Adobe Photoshop, but I will just show you briefly uh, how to crop these assets out and use them individually. If you don't want to do any sort of cropping or photo manipulation for your sprites, uh, you're more than welcome to use the AI generated sprite sheets. Uh, I think you could potentially use the entire image as just one big sprite sheet and then programmatically define where each object is. But the background color is this sort of shade or gradient, if you will. So I think we will need to at least remove that. Anyways, instead of doing this the hard way, I'm actually just going to go over and select the object selection tool. And now I can simply copy and paste these assets into individual files and then simply remove the background and save it as a new PNG. There we have it, an AI generated machine turret piece of equipment with sort of this post-apocalyptic feel to it. This would probably have taken several hours for me to digitally paint, so seriously props to artificial intelligence. That being said, there are still lots of things to consider when using AI artwork for your video game assets. You can see that these aren't perfect and may need some touch-ups before adding them into your game. Additionally, while this method is really awesome for, you know, tools and machine machinery type of sprites, it doesn't really appear to create your animated or frame by frame character sprites. It just makes a whole bunch of variations of your characters. However, it is an awesome tool to spark your imagination and get you started. If you have an idea for your game assets, but just can't quite visually represent it, do check out uh, Mid Journey. All in all, pixel art design is a rare skill that takes tons of time and patience. I can't wait to see more advancements with this technology and AI in general. It's truly a game changer in my opinion, but I am biased because it's currently my concentration at university. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you in the next one.